Hey folks, welcome. My name is Emily and this is Gently Chaotic Knits, which is a mostly knitting video podcast, but sometimes I will chat about other crafty things that I might be up to. Um, but really it's it's mostly about the knitting. I am in a new location. You might have noticed that this is not my usual setup. Um, you also might notice that I have a pup friend behind me uh, right here, and this pup is not Norman. Uh, Norman is present in this house. He is somewhere else. Um, but I have some really big news to share, and I'm excited to finally share it. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know what's up, but I no longer live in Seattle. My husband and I left Seattle last Friday. Today is Wednesday, August 30th. We left Seattle last week and made the drive uh, to Oklahoma, which is where our families live. And both of our families, luckily, uh, live here in Oklahoma. And we are going to be traveling pretty much full time for about eight months starting next week. So the reason we came to Oklahoma is because um, we're going to be, Oklahoma is kind of going to be our home base in between trips. So we will be going on trips for like three to four weeks at a time and then coming back to Oklahoma. That way we can see family. And also um, our pup Norman is going to be staying with my parents. Uh, during this time. So anyway, I wanted to just do the news up front uh, and share that because I'm in a different place and you probably are wondering what's going on. Uh, things are incredibly chaotic right now. I'm starting to get a little bit settled in, but even just like this morning has been has felt like chaos to me. So I'm going to do my best. I know it's going to be chaotic, but I feel like if you have watched this channel for a while then you've probably come to expect that and that is okay and I'm just here to do my best and that's all I can do. So I wanted to make sure to get a video recorded during this week before we leave for our first trip on Saturday um, and I will talk a little bit more about all the travel and everything. Um, I actually put up when I posted about this on Instagram I put up a little question box in my stories and I asked if folks have questions about the travel and anything else. And so I'm going to go through at toward the end of this episode and I'm going to answer all your questions and just talk generally about our travel and like where we're headed and logistically how it's going to work and all that stuff. So I will definitely share about that, but I do want to, I wanted to, I guess I could have split this up into two videos and now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should, but I'm going to not. And we're just going to do one mega episode. And part of the reason for that is that I don't have a ton of knitting updates. And so this is actually good. I think because we'll have a more normal length video, but it'll just be more about like travel stuff. And I mean, I still have knitting to share with you, but I wanted to make sure to record because I won't be able to record. I'm not gonna, I'm not planning to record during our travels. And so um, my, I mean, I haven't been super regular and consistent with my uploads anyway, but it's gonna probably be like once a month, roughly at best if I am, staying on track. So anyway, um, that's kind of the, I don't know. I feel like I just kind of blurted it out and I didn't, I didn't think through exactly like how to explain everything. And so we'll talk more about it later, but first I just wanted to say the news. I'm in Oklahoma now. I am in my parents' house. They also, my parents have two dogs and a cat and then Norman is also here. So we have four animals here in this house. And so there's a good chance that there are noises and that there are things happening in the background in this video or that I have to pause and deal with things. And so if I do, that's fine. Um, but let's talk about knitting stuff. Like, should we just pretend like this is normal and everything's normal and this is a normal episode? And then, and then we'll talk about the chaos later. I don't know. Like, I'm not really, I don't know, but let's just do that. Let's talk about the knitting stuff and then we'll talk about the other stuff later. So I have my notes here. I did actually make notes because I knew that I would not be able to get through this without some notes and like something to kind of bring me back in and keep me focused. So let's talk about it. I don't remember exactly where I was in all these projects last time I recorded because it does feel like, again, it always feels like it's been a while. 
but I'm just gonna tell you where I'm at now. So first I will update you on my sister's sweater. So I am knitting. This is a dad sweater, which is a pattern by me um, that I'm knitting for my sister. Uh, the yarn I'm using is, excuse me, La Bien Aimee Cori Worsted in the colorway Lichen. And it's a color she picked that I really love. I normally, I think I've said this before, I'm normally not a green person, but this is like a green gray and it's really, really pretty. And I think is just turning out beautiful and I've really enjoyed it as I've been working on it. So this is the yarn that the pattern calls for. So no, I'm not making like any kind of gauge or sizing adjustments or anything. Um, for my sister, I'm knitting the standard shoulder size two. So in case you haven't heard me talk about this enough and you don't remember or never heard me talk about it, um, this pattern is, well, first of all, this pattern is inspired by sweaters, these like uh, classic wooly wool sweaters that my dad wore, um, still wears, like in the winter time. Um, I took one of his sweaters and um, used it as kind of like a jumping off point to write the pattern. I, because it is like based off of a men's sweater, but of course I wanted to make sure that it was able to be worn by um like people who have all different types of bodies i uh did write the pattern to have uh two different kind of size ranges there's a standard shoulder and a broad shoulder size range um that have like different like two kind of separate patterns for that uh this is the standard shoulder which is the one that follows women's size charts uh, size two, which is the same size at, that I knit for my sweater, my uh, sample that I wear myself. So I'm knitting the same size that I did for mine. Uh, mine I used the same yarn, I used French gray, and for Hannah's I'm using lichen, so they're actually kind of close in color, but hers is def definitely like a green gray, and mine is just like a nice cool gray. Um, and... I'm using just the standard needle size that the pattern calls for. So that's a US 6 needle for this one, um, US 5 for the ribbing. And I just yesterday finished the body of the sweater. I did the tubular bind off. I just sat down and did it all in one sitting. So it's a really nice, beautiful edging with a couple inches of ribbing. And now I was actually in the middle, <laughs> you can see in the middle of picking up stitches for the armhole. I have not finished doing that. I just started it and then I got distracted by something. I think I started cooking dinner or something. I was, <laughs> was in the middle of this and then I stopped. So maybe I will finish this after I record. Probably not though. I probably will have some other thing to do. So um, yes, what else do I have to say about this? I like... I know it may be a surprise when you hear this, but I feel like this is the project I've been working on mostly since I last recorded, which I believe was like three weeks ago. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't leave a marker there, but I was like well into the body when I last recorded. So I pretty much just finished the body. And that's kind of it. Um, I mean, I'll talk more about what our lives have looked like the last couple of weeks toward the end when I talk about the travel stuff, but I have not been knitting a ton. <laughs> I've not been knitting a ton, but I'm really glad to have finished the body of this sweater. I um, am not planning to take this project with me on my, like my trip that I'm leaving on, leaving for in a couple days. Uh, so, but I do wanna have this finished. I really wanna make sure that this is done by early October because I am going to visit my sister in October and her birthday is at the end of October and I really want to make sure that I can give this to her in person when I go to visit her. I think there's a chance that I won't be done with it like when I arrive at her house but maybe by the time I leave her house it'll be done and blocked. That's the hope. Uh, so we'll see but I really I just have two sleeves and the collar and I'm feeling like if I am doing a good amount of knitting I can do two sleeves in a week 
I mean, honestly, I can do a sleeve in a day, so it'll just be two days, right? Uh, no, I don't really have full knitting days anymore, just given the shape that my life is taking right now, so... Yeah, we'll see. Um, I really need to get this done though. So, but I am really enjoying knitting it. Again, this is my, I guess this is my fifth dad sweater. If you count how I had to rip out and re-knit my original sample, it's kind of like my five and a half, sixth dad sweater. Um, and I haven't tired of the pattern yet. I hate to do like, you know, self-promotion, but... I think it's a great pattern and I'm enjoying knitting it. Uh, in case you missed it, I have knit them for every member of my immediate family. Oh no, this is my sixth because I knit one for my husband as well. So I knit the first one for me and then I knit one for my dad. I knit one for my mom, for my brother, for my husband, and this one for my sister. So this is my sixth slash seventh because I knit the sample for me kind of twice. Although my friend Sylvan, uh, just she helped me finish the sweater as well so um i didn't do all the knitting on that one anyway this is not interesting i have knit a lot of the sweater i've done it with different yarns um different colors different sizes and i um i am both happy and sad that this is my last one for a while i am like really excited for my whole family to have them just in time for like fall and winter. I think it's going to be really nice and sweet for us all to have them. Um, and part of me has like really loved this project. I've really loved working on these sweaters, but also I'm ready to knit other things as well. <laughs> and I'm also like, I'm not, I feel like I, it doesn't bother me to knit for other people. I actually really love it. And I feel like every time I talk, how much I love knitting for my loved ones. Uh, but also I'm excited for my garment knitting to be back on the for me train. I'm excited to be knitting garments primarily for myself again. So yeah, all the feelings about it. Um, I've loved working on this and I'm loving how it's turning out. So that is the dad sweater by me for my sister who I love. Uh, so that is my first work in progress. And then I don't even know if this is worth showing. I do have a sock whip that I can show you that I just carry in my purse and like occasionally I'll get a second to do like a row, but like, I think I did literally one half of one row yesterday when I was sitting in the car waiting to help my mom take some of these animals to the vet. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I am literally in the middle of a row. Let me, I'm honestly just going to finish this so that I can show it to you more easily because this is crazy. Uh, these socks, I feel like have been on the needles forever. I have not made fast progress on them, but I like to just have like a sock. Oh no, I'm not paying attention well enough. You can probably hear my parents' cat screaming. <laughs> um, I, sorry, I'm getting my needles all. I should not be trying to talk and do this at the same time because I'm in the heel flap. Okay, and I don't want this to fall off, so I'm gonna just put it right here. Okay, I have been working on these socks for a long time, but I really like to just have a nice, easy, and quick project that I just, it's small, and I just toss in my bag so that I can take with me in case I do have a second. It's like someone, you know um, how people call water bottles sometimes, like the people who carry a water bottle with them everywhere, it's like their emotional support water bottle. One of my friends was telling me this is just like my emotional support knitting that like even if I don't think I'm going to be able to knit, I still have to have it with me. It's like my emotional support knitting. Or like maybe, I think maybe someone commented that on one of my videos and also one of my friends was talking to me about it as well, but y'all are absolutely, whoever said that or had that thought, absolutely right. This is my emotional support knitting and I have not done a lot of work on it. It's like the leg is done and I started the heel flap. I'm not sure if you can see. I don't really know what the lighting situation is going to be here too. This is like I'm in the only room that has good natural light. So 
hopefully you can see. But this yarn is Ovis Etc. Igne, which is a sock weight yarn from Ovis Etc. I got it from La Mercerie, the yarn store I used to work at. That was really sad to say for the first time. We'll talk about that in a second as well. But um, the colorway is Confetti Charcoal. Um, and it has these really fun, beautiful little white spots, which they call confetti. Uh, and this is a sock that I am knitting for my husband. I am just doing a three by one rib. I did one by one rib for the cuff and then I switched to three by one rib. And I did 64 stitches and this is on a US zero because my sock gauge is whack. Just like really insanely loose. And so to get something that is like actually gonna hug his foot, I have to do 64 stitches on a US zero, even though he has like pretty large feet. I'm just a really loose knitter. So anyway, uh, I was kind of hoping that I would finish this first sock before we left on our trip and that is not seeming like it's gonna happen, but I just wanted to give you all a little update on that. Sorry, my dog, Norman, come here. You're fine. He probably sees a squirrel outside and he wants me to let him out so that he can go yell at it. But I don't really want to do that. Um, okay, well, hopefully he's okay now. He stopped. I don't even know if you guys can hear him. So that is my second work in progress. And then I have two other works in progress that are new that you haven't seen before and also do not have a ton of progress. So let's do it. So this one I actually talked about last time because I think I, I was planning to cast this on. So this is, this may look familiar to you. This is my Aurelia pullover, which um, you may be like, Emily, you did show us this last week and I sh showed you a previous version of this uh, that I had knit before I was working on and then I ended up actually restarting. So this is all I, like I have knit all of this since I last chatted with y'all. So this is all new knitting. Um, and yeah, this is the Aurelia Pullover by Sorry Nordland. And sorry, Norman. Okay, I should probably let him out. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back from the quick dog break. You can probably still hear them running around. There's, this is Ozzy. He is one of my parents' dogs. He really likes to sit. Um, in the back part of the chair. And he also really likes to be with people. He likes to be with us. So since I'm the only one in the house right now, he is pretty much attached to me right now. So, okay, what was I talking about? I was talking about Aurelia. Mm, okay. So I cast on Aurelia last winter or fall maybe with my friend Maya, it was a matching project that we started. And then for a variety of reasons, we ended up getting derailed. We kind of paused on it. And so then this year we decided we wanted to come back to it. And so we had a little cast on party a couple weeks ago. We cast on our Aurelias again. And so we got started and this is the progress that I've made. So Aurelia is a just a cabled pullover pattern by Sorry Nordland. I am using Sorella Cashmere DK in the colorway Brick from the Autumn in New York collection. And the yarn is just gorgeous. Here is a ball of it in the cake. So beautiful. So I have made quite a bit of progress. I feel decent about the amount of progress I've made, especially given how chaotic the last few weeks have been. And I'm really loving this yarn and the pattern. The color is just gorgeous. And the stitch definition is amazing and the pattern is amazing. Um, but however, we're gonna be pausing on this again. The hope, so my friend Maya and I are going to Right back together this year uh, at the end of October and the hope is that we could get these finished 
by Rhinebeck. That these could be our Rhinebeck sweaters that we could wear together there. Um, however, we just like there were some things that came up that were going to make it really difficult for us to get these done in time and like with my travel and with everything else we decided to pivot to something that was going to be a little bit easier easier on our bodies easier on our timelines easier on everything so i have another new cast on and i'm trying to remember if there's anything else i need to say about this before i start talking about the other one i'm oh i'm okay i am so part of the reason that i restarted is because i am actually like my gauge was a little weird and okay i do need to talk about this a little more so i think i talked last time about how i ended up getting a couple extra skeins of this yarn because i originally did not order enough i only ordered four skeins and like that maybe would have made it if i made the smallest size um, but my gauge was weird and I wasn't super pumped about how it was turning out when I was knitting the smallest size. And so I ended up going up a needle and also going up a size so that I would have a garment that's just like a little bit cozier. And I liked the fabric with a one large one size needle up as well. So I'm now knitting the size two with a US seven needle. And I'm really liking the way that the fabric is looking and it's a little bit of a larger cable repeat on the front and the back and i really like the way that looks as well so those are kind of and i since i got extra yarn i know i'm gonna have enough even if i do the larger size so that's kind of the reason why i ended up restarting i am not i don't even think i'm quite to the part where i was on the last one before i restarted so i just and i have i don't have the heart to rip it out I took it off of the barber cord, but it just has like all the live stitches. I think it's in my bag in the other room. It is just hanging out. <laughs> it's just sitting there like not on the needle or on the barber cord or anything. Um, but I don't think I'm quite, I think I'm close, but I'm not quite to where I was with my first attempt at this. So, um, like I mentioned, we are going to kind of press pause on this one again. I don't know when I'm going to come back to it, but I am confident that I will. I love how this sweater is turning out. I love the color. I love the pattern. I love everything about it. It is like does require some focus. At the beginning, there are, excuse me, there are like four cable charts that you're following at the same time. It's like not the kind of thing that you really do while you're doing something else. Like not I can't even probably pay attention to TV or like a podcast or anything like I'm pretty much paying attention to this at least every other row so like all the cables are on I guess it's on odd rows and then the even rows are mostly just like knits and pearls and so like cables and increases are on all on even rows I, I don't remember if it's even or odd but you know what I mean like every other row you have to do cables and increases and then the other row it's just like knits and pearls basically um, and so it's crazy how much longer the cable rows take than the just like plain rows. It's really like really long the cable rows. So, but anyway, because I'm like following the charts and I'm just like not comfortable enough. I can read the knitting pretty well. Like I can start to see what's going on and I can start to figure out where things are going to go and everything. I just, I'm too nervous. Like I'm too anxious of a person, I guess to like just kind of trust myself and like reading the knitting and so I do like follow the charts pretty meticulously and that means that this just really requires quite a bit of focus to work on this um I don't know if as I go I'll get more comfortable and I'll be able to do it without that level of like focus but for right now at least it is a pretty like dedicated have to be working on this and this only and not really paying attention to anything else I can maybe do it if I'm like chatting but it can't be a like intense conversation it has to be like a pretty casual conversation if I'm going to be working on this as well so uh so that is Aurelia the other thing I wanted to say about this my friend Maya also taught me how to do cabling without a cable needle and I had like understood in concept how to do it before, but I was just, again, with the anxiety, was like too nervous 
to cable without a cable needle because I was worried I was going to drop my stitches and it was just going to be chaos and whatever. But eventually, like when we were casting on together, I was just watching her do it and she was so much faster at the cabling than me and I didn't have a cable needle with me and so I was going to have to use like a interchangeable needle tip or something and then I was like I just need to go for it and so she showed me how to do it and I am so glad because it really makes things so much faster and like there are moments when I'm like ah, I'm gonna drop it but generally it's like not that stressful and it's way faster so I'm really happy to be doing that so I'm definitely cruising on definitely cruising on it now um but again I'm gonna it's gonna just take a little rest and then maybe for this winter I'll pick it back up and get going again in the winter. I feel like that could be a good time for this one. So yeah, that is Aurelia. And then like I mentioned, Maya and I decided to pivot for our Rhinebeck sweaters and we just cast on our new Rhinebeck sweaters last night. So we did, since I'm not in the Seattle area anymore, we did a little video call which was really sweet, so that we could cast on our sweaters together. And so let me show you what we have going. So the good news is that Maya and I pretty much have like a list of matching projects at all times of like, and some of them we already like have yarn for or like had yarn for. So whenever we decided like, okay, Aurelia maybe isn't gonna happen, we were able to pivot so quickly and we both were just like, okay, let's do this project now because we were like ready to go. So love that, like it was not a big deal to pivot. Um, I shared this yarn, I think in a recent podcast episode. This is a fairly recent acquisition for me. Um, I am using for this project the Boucle DK from Explore Knits and Fibers, and this is the colorway Pollen. And I have to show you guys the cake. It's so big and squishy. Oh my gosh. Look at that. And it's just glowing, and it's it's amazing, and I love it so much. I, I love this yarn. The color is gorgeous, of course. Allie does an amazing job but it's also just so squishy and so much fun so we decided we wanted like a really nice oversized v-neck pretty simple uh sweater for this yarn because we really wanted the yarn to be the feature for it to just be like a really nice good squishy fuzzy boucle sweater so we are knitting the Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit, and I've actually knit that pattern before. Um, really great news, she has expanded her size range for that pattern, so I'm really pumped to hear that. Um, and we just started it and just have a couple inches. So this is the beginnings of my Rhinebeck sweater, and I'm so excited about it. So, uh, I was worried about knitting with the boucle. I was worried that like my needle would get stuck in the little loops or that it would be just like really annoying to knit with and it really isn't. The only thing is like it is a little tough to kind of see your stitches. It's like a little bit tough to um, to do like if you needed to count rows or if you needed to find like um, I was looking at my previous cumulus blouse and comparing it to this one and like you just can't really see the increases on this one in the same way that you can on the other one it's just all lost in the boucle like you really can't see that very well uh so it's gonna be so fuzzy it's gonna be so fuzzy and so cute and i'm so excited for it and maya is doing hers in muckross from Explore Knits, which is very much a Maya color. It is like a, we have been describing it as like a mucky green. So I feel like that'll go really well with pollen as well, which is kind of like a mucky yellow. So we'll be mucky together, uh, which I'm very excited for. And I also realized like I mention Maya on this podcast like every single time and because we're knitting things together all the time and worked together and everything. And I, um, I think I talked about this at the beginning. You guys probably know who she is, but Maya is what Maya made on Instagram and I'll put her Instagram handle in the description box as well. But if you wanna go check out her 
like Instagram. She has pictures of her projects and stuff there. And I just wanted to say that as well. But yes, this is so squishy. And this one I am going to be taking on my trip. I think this is going to be a perfect travel project. I think because especially like once I get it joined in the round, it's going to go so quickly. It's, I'm going to be cruising. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to be a perfect Rhinebeck sweater too, because it's just like, what a fall vibe, this like golden mustardy yellow color. I think it's going to be perfect. I don't know if this is like the best color for me, but I love it so much. And I'm already imagining what I'm going to wear with it and how I'm going to style it. And I think it's just gonna be so cozy and soft and squishy. Just like, I wish you guys could reach through and feel what this feels like. It feels so good. So there again is the cake and the boucle. And I feel like this is gonna knit up super fast. So um, my gauge is a little bit off. The pattern calls for, I think, 18 stitches per four inches. And I have about 17 and I am actually getting that on a smaller needle. Uh, I had to go down a couple needle sizes. I think the pattern calls for a seven and I am knitting this on a five, US five needle. But I really like the fabric that I'm getting. Um, and so since my gauge is just a little bit loose, I am knitting the size one instead of the size two. I would probably, if I got gauge, I would probably knit the size two just to give a really nice oversized feeling. And for this one, I am gonna do the size one um, and then given my gauge being a little bit off, I think it will result in the perfect cozy sweater. So size one, US five needle, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So that is all of my knitting. <laughs> that's all I have to share. And this literally I started last night. So it's a good thing I waited until today to record because otherwise I would have had even less to talk about. So. Um, also my cutie project bag that I sewed myself. It just feels very fall with the like dark orangey fern fabric. I feel like this is perfect for this project as well. So, uh, yeah, that's all I have been working on. And that's pretty much all I will be working on. I really need to cast on my second hand spun sock. I want those. Kind of want those for Rhinebeck, so I feel like I need to. This would also be cute with this sweater. So I need to. I need to knit that second sock, and I also need to knit Nafisa socks, and I just. I there's lots to do, but my most pressing project is not a knitting project. My spinning project. I really need to get going. So let me talk to you about my spinning project. I am spinning for the Cinnabar shawl which is a shawl pattern by Andrea Mowry that has both a main color and a contrast color. And I don't know why I thought that I could spin both the main color and the contrast color. And especially considering how like chaotic my life has been, I just have not had a ton of time for spinning, but I did bring my wheel is here with me in Oklahoma. It's at my parents' house. I've done a little bit of spinning since getting here and I really need to get going because my knitting I can take with me on our travels, but my spinning, I just have, I don't have an e-spinner or anything. I just have my ladybug wheel and I definitely can't bring that with me. Uh, so I only will have time to spin when I'm back in Oklahoma in between trips. And my friend Maya and I have been talking about doing a, like a little mini knit along again for, we just knit the same thing all the time and it's the best thing and I love it so much. And also, Speaking of, I can't believe I didn't mention this before, we're running a knit along right now called the Match Along. And if you are also knitting anything along with a knitting friend, or if you wanna knit anything along with us, that totally counts. And we'd love to hear about it. And there's a hashtag on Instagram and it's called Match Along 2023. And so we are doing our Rainbow sweaters are definitely part of the match along and Rhinebeck is the end of our match along. So I think it's October 21st is what we're calling it is the end of the match along. So still got plenty of time if you want to 
cast on something. It doesn't have to be knitting, can be crochet. We're also crocheting vests that are kind of for the match along as well. Not kind of, they are for the match along, although I don't know if we'll finish them. That's kind of why I said that. But I haven't made any progress on my vest, so that's why I didn't show it to you. It's actually in the other room, but I am hoping to make progress on it. I may bring that on my travels. Also because I have anxiety about knitting needles on planes. Like I'm not nervous about bringing them um, through security in the US, but I have some nervousness in other countries. I've tried to read about like which countries can give you trouble with knitting needles, like in your carry-on. I don't know. So I'm wondering if for some of our flights, if I'm nervous, I should just do bring my crochet project because I don't think they will take my crochet away. Anyway, that's a whole separate thing. So we also, this is not for the match along because it will be done by that point, but we, Maya and I have been talking about doing the Cinnabar shawl, which is a shawl pattern by Andrea Mowry. Um, she has already spun her yarn for it. She is ready to go. I am not. I'm very much behind. So I've shared about this before. I already finished my first skein of my main color. So this is my main color, which is just this beautiful cream rambouillet. And I'm in the middle of spinning my contrast color. And so for the contrast color, I have about eight ounces, eight or nine ounces, and I split it into two. And then I'm gonna spin one bobbin of each and then I'm gonna apply them together. So I have here to show you, this is my first bobbin and I've made a little bit of progress since I showed you last, I think. And this is the rest of what I have for this first bobbin. It's like I have this much fiber left and I really would like to finish it before Saturday. And I really need to get going because I have basically this week and then I leave on a trip and then I come back and I have another week and then I leave on my trip that toward the end of that trip is Ryan Beck. So I need to at least have some of my contrast. I'm not gonna finish at all of the yarn, but the idea is I need to have some of my contrast color and some of my main color, which I already have my main color. And then I can at least start the shawl with Maya. So, I really would like to finish this in the next like two days. <laughs> and then I also have this one that I'll have to spin during the week when I'm back in between my first trip and my October trip. So who thinks I'm gonna make it? I'm not sure if I think I'm gonna make it or not. I, <laughs> I'm not sure. I need to get going, but um, this is where I'm at. I need to spend like half of this today. And it's two o'clock and I haven't started spinning yet today because I've been doing other things and I'm recording this and I'm just, I'm doing my best. So we'll see, but I'm gonna try and we'll see. Maybe I'll just have to buy an e-spinner so that I can. <laughs> So that I can spin when I'm not here. <sighs> okay, uh, that's my spinning and that is all of like what I'm working on right now. That's all I have for like spinning progress and knitting whips and yeah, I don't really have anything else that I've been working on. I do have some acquisitions though. So, I got my yarn from the Woolberry, I think it's from the Caboose collection. So I just ordered one sweater quantity from that collection and I have it in my hands now. So I wanted to show you all that. So I ordered seven skeins of Cool Breeze in the Natural Decay base. So I have more of it. I don't need to hold all of it up. I have a lot of it. I am planning to make a cardigan with this. Here it all is. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, I am planning to make a cardigan. Uh, I'm planning to make the, I think it's called the Calm Down Cardigan by Lily Kate Makes. 
And some of my friends are also planning to make it as well. Y'all probably know by now, I love to knit along with other people. I love to knit along with my friends. I get so much enjoyment out of that. So some of my friends from my Seattle knitting group are gonna make this. And then I also think some of the folks from the um, like Bay Area knitting group are also thinking about making it as well. So it'll be a fun little knit along. So if anyone else would like to join and knit the Calm Down cardigan, would love that. Feel free to join. Um, I'm not sure exactly when we're going to start, probably in the fall, but I love this color and the base feels really good. This is the, uh, since it's Berry Natural DK, it's non-superwash uh, and it's 100% merino um, and it feels really good. It feels really good and I think that this cardigan is going to be really nice. A perfect staple, a good, it's like not a neutral, but it kind of is a neutral, you know? And I love this color, this light blue. So that will be really fun. Also, I had my last day at La Mercerie. Um, Sorry if you can hear my dogs jingling. Uh, really just in the best moment, dude. <laughs> I'm talking about a sad thing. Uh, I had to have my last day at La Mercerie, so one of the consequences, Norman is trying to come here. Do you need to come sit with me? Come here. Come here, buddy. Okay, here's Norman. Do you want to sit in my lap for a second? I know you're going to leave, but you can sit at least for a second. So, here's Norman. Thank you. Okay. You can sit here with me, but I have to talk now. Okay, so many kisses. Why not you? He's trying to look out the window. <laughs> We're doing our best right now, but it's a little bit chaotic. Um, okay, so because of our travel plans, uh, I talked about leaving the Seattle area and that also meant leaving La Mercerie. Um, in case you are unaware, haven't watched or I haven't talked about it when you've watched. Um, I formerly worked at La Mercerie, which is a local yarn store on Bainbridge Island just outside of Seattle, Washington. And because we're leaving, we left the Seattle area, I had to leave my job at La Mercerie, which is just a huge bummer. Working at La Mercerie was just incredible. Um, it came to me at the perfect time and just felt like such a perfect and natural place for me to be. I, the moment that I met Jess, the owner of La Mercerie, I just knew that was where I was supposed to be and like working with her. And at La Mercerie and with all the other folks I worked with there was just truly, it was a dream, it was a blessing. So I'm so, so, so fortunate for my time there and will always, always be connected with La Mercerie and with Jess and with everyone else that I worked with there forever. But um, that was an extremely emotional couple of days or, you know, my final day there was extremely emotional. Um, and I also bought some yarn on my last day. <laughs> unsurprisingly. So there were a couple things like new, it was basically just like new bases. We got into the shop that I was like, I really need a skein of this so that I can try it. So um, let me show you. I actually think there's a dog on top of the yarn. <laughs> there are dogs everywhere. There's a dog on top of the yarn that I'm trying to show you. Let me see if I can get it out from under her. Oh, Lou, you are tangled. There we go. I got it. I got it. Don't worry. Okay, so a couple new bases that we got at La Mercerie. So if you are local to the Bainbridge area, you should go over and check it out. So this one is actually a new base that we had at Flock Fiber Festival. This is a new La Bienname base called Sport Nouveau. And it is a sport weight non-superwash merino. I just got this one skein of it in the colorway Cocolico which is a really fun bright red. I've been really feeling the bright red recently, I guess. But I want to make a basic, it's like a simple bandana pattern. It's a La Bienname pattern, and I actually don't remember the name of the pattern off the top of my head right now. Uh, but my friend Tegan, who also works at La Mercerie, she knit that little cutie bandana pattern. Also in this yarn base, she used, um, I think, 
Floromorganite, which is like a bright pink, whatever the neon pink color from Love Anime is. And it was so cute. And I was like, I have to make this and I want to match. And I originally had picked out, um, I believe it was Winterfell, which is this beautiful dark bluish green, mostly blue, like a dark royal blue kind of color. And I had that ready and I was going to buy it. And then I was kind of like, I think the bright red would be really fun. I'm a little nervous that it's going to give kind of like camp counselor vibes. Like, can you imagine with this outfit, I'm wearing my overalls and I have this little bandana like tied around my neck in this bright red color. Uh, I definitely think it will give me camp counselor vibes, but to be honest with you, I'm okay with that being my vibe. Like I kind of feel like camp counselor could be my vibe. So I'm not opposed to it. But yeah, I did get one skein of this. And then we also got at Lumberstree some magpie. So I've actually never knit with magpie before. And as soon as I saw we got Swanky Sock and Swanky DK from Magpie Fibers, I knew I had to try it. I just really wanted to try it. So I got one skein of Ghost Town on Swanky Sock. And it is just perfect I think like the color of the base is perfect and then also all the speckles are just like look at those speckles excuse me they're so good and I feel like ghost town is just like a really cute name and the yarn feels incredible like it feels so good I can't even tell you how good it feels so I was just like I have to try it so I'll probably just knit a pair of socks out of this. I have so much sock yarn that I really need to be working through, but I'm just doing my best. So that is that. And then I also bought some fiber. So Lumber Street now is carrying fiber and spinning and wheels and it's amazing. I had to get some. So there's tons of gorgeous fiber and I did limit myself just to one bag, but we got fiber from hedgehog fibers and this is just a I think they call it a lucky dip it's like a variety pack random bits of different types of fiber and just like each bag is different there's different fiber content there's different colors and I picked out this bag because I love it and I think it's just so much fun and it's so beautiful and I don't know when I'm gonna spin this and I don't know what I'm gonna use it for but I was just like I have to have so pretty so I got that and then this is not from Lumbercery but I got another fiber purchase I talked to you all before about the gray fin that I got at flock and I got more of it so I had messaged Brittany from fiber and flame about if she had any more and she did and I got it. I bought it. So I have 380 more grams of this gray fin. And I'm so excited for this to be my first ever sweater spin. I think it's going to be great. I'm going to, don't know when I'm going to spin this. I don't know <laughs> how or what and when or where, but I'm excited about it. I'm going to spin this fin. I'll probably do a three ply because the sweater pattern I have in mind is the Gib Raglan by Andrea Mowry and it um uses a worsted weight yarn so for me to get worsted weight I think I'll have to do a three ply so I'm gonna do a three ply and I'm gonna spin up hopefully a worsted weight and I'm going to use it for a fun beautiful textured raglan which I think will just be perfect so that is that and then my last acquisition is actually a gift that I really wanted to share with you guys um, I don't have a ton of info about the maker, but for my birthday this year, my sister got me a yarn bowl and I wanted to show it to you guys because of how beautiful it is. So here it is and I'll just rotate around so you can see what it looks like. Um, isn't it stunning? And it's got these really fun little like paint spotters on it. Um, and my sister got this. She, uh, recently moved to Wisconsin and she got this from like a, I think it was just like a farmer's market or like a, just a art market or festival that they just had there, um, in Madison. So yeah, I love it so much. I've already been using it. 
I've been using it when I was working on her sweater. So I'm like using the bowl she got me. Um, and I just love it so much. And it was such a thoughtful and sweet gift and it's beautiful and I love it. So, and you can never have enough yarn bowls. I feel like you just need one in each room of the house. So yeah, I am really, really happy about it. And I love it so much. So yeah, that is my acquisitions. And wow, I really thought that I was going to get through all the knitting updates and the normal podcast episode stuff more quickly because I have a whole section to talk about travel stuff and I'm wondering if it would be best for me to split this into another video. My husband and I have been talking about traveling like over a long period of time for a while now. Um, it's been something that's just been on our minds for a while. We've been trying over the last, you know, I guess our entire adult lives, our like adult portion of our relationship we've been talking about. We've been trying to prioritize travel. We've been talking about how we can better integrate travel into our day-to-day -day lives. And now just felt like a really good time given where we were at just like logistically and everything. It seemed like a really good time for us to like kind of take the plunge and really prioritize travel. So we left Seattle. We moved all of our stuff into a storage unit here in Oklahoma and we are living, um, keep making Oklahoma kind of our home base. Both of our families live here. So uh, we are just kind of like staying with family when we're here and we are gonna be pretty much traveling full time for about eight months, starting here in a couple of days, we leave for our first trip. So really, really exciting, can't wait. It's been crazy. The logistics are insane. We just drove for three days to get here. Um, <laughs> it's been wild. Uh, but I'm really, really excited. And when I shared about this on Instagram, I did not give a ton of the details. I just gave basically that little blurb. And I put a question box in my stories for if folks had questions about how this is going to work or about anything. Um, because I can talk about how it's going to go, but I, uh, I knew I'd probably miss things and I wanted to make sure to cover the stuff that you guys were curious about. So... Um, I'm first going to, I guess, just give you all a, a general idea of like where we're going and what's, what's happening. And, um, and then I'll just go through some of the questions and I will, excuse me, and I will try to answer as many of them as I can. So, um, I already talked about how I left La Mercerie. So, um, one question that came up a lot is are we going to be working during this time? And the answer is no. Both Nafis and I um, are not going to be working during this time. We felt like it was really important to us to really dedicate our time and our energy to travel. Um, we feel really fortunate that we're able to do that. Um, and we will go back to like working after our travel period is done. So the intent is for us to travel at least for eight months. We do have most of our trips planned over that time because both uh, Nofis and I are big planners. So it's hard for us to not <laughs> have it all mapped out. So we have it mostly mapped out. Um, we are leaving it at least somewhat open just in case we really, really fall in love with it and we feel like we need to keep going. Um, we could continue after the eight month period is up. We will be, the tentative idea is that we will be wrapping up in the like May-ish, late April, early May kind of time period and we'll be starting in September. So our dog is staying with my parents in Oklahoma in their house, which I am in right now. And um, so in between our trip, we're going to basically be taking trips for like three to four weeks at a time, which, wow, I've never gone on a trip for that long before. So we'll see how that goes. Um, most of the time we go on trips for like one to two weeks max, like a week and a half maybe. So three weeks, four weeks, one of our trips is like almost five weeks at a time is going to be a new experience. And so we'll have to see how that goes and if we like it and if everything goes well. But um, yeah, so 
we are going to be traveling for like a few weeks at a time and then we'll come back to Oklahoma as kind of like a rest recharge period for about a week at a time and that way we get to see our family. Um, my parents and office's family is here. My brother is still here going to college so um, and then like Norman is here as well so we'll get to see family when we uh, all of my grandparents also live in the area so um we'll get to see family when we're back in Oklahoma which is, was a big priority for us and a big reason for doing it this way as well um because to be honest Oklahoma City being our departure airport is really not the best it would be better if we were like even still in Seattle or like Chicago or Atlanta or New York or something but um we will basically be flying from Oklahoma City to one of those bigger US airports before going <laughs> somewhere else because Oklahoma City is just not the whatever this doesn't matter anyway um we are traveling both domestic and internationally so we have some international trips planned we also have some domestic trips planned um like just within the US just kind of a variety of some of both of those our first trip uh, is actually to Romania, Greece, and Croatia. Uh, one of our friends is getting married in Romania, and that is kind of this kickoff of our adventure. That's like the start. That was uh, a big driver in it for us in like this being the start of our travel period is we thought, okay, we're going to go to Romania. We might as well just like kind of extend that trip, and then like that can be the start for us. So... Uh, yeah, in a couple days here, we are leaving for Romania. Um, neither Nafis or myself have been to Romania before, or Greece, or Croatia. So really, really excited for that. We are going to be spending about a one, one week in each place. Um, of course, like the time in Romania, part of that will be at the wedding. Um, but then we're also going to go on like a little tour of Transylvania. And then in Greece, we're going to go to a couple islands and also try to spend some time in Athens as well. And then um, in Croatia, we're going to be like going all over um, to the coast and islands and to the national parks and everything. So we are very much planners. Um, unfortunately, we are not the type of people that can just be like, let's go and like figure it out once we get there. We are the type of people that are like almost hour by hour planning each day ahead of time, um, which is a lot of work. And that's part of why the last few weeks, few months, honestly, have been so chaotic and stressful is because not only um, was I working on helping to organize Flock Fiber Festival, which was, very amazing and successful, but also a lot of work. Uh, also, we have been planning basically like six trips at once and like trying to figure out the logistics for moving all of our stuff and where our stuff's gonna go and where our dog's gonna go and where everything, is, how everything is good. So it's been, it's been a lot, but um, we have pretty much our trips pretty well planned for the rest of the year. Um, and I guess I can go through now is a good time for me to go through like roughly where we're going to go. Um, so in September, we're going to be in Romania, Greece, and Croatia. Then we're coming back to Oklahoma for a little bit. And then we are heading to Madison, Wisconsin for about a week and a half to visit my sister and her boyfriend. Uh, so we'll be there for a little while. And then we are headed to Ithaca, New York, and we're going to spend about a week in the Finger Lakes region of New York in the fall, in October, and it's going to be amazing. And then from there, we are headed to Rhinebeck. So we are going to New York Sheep and Wool Festival. We will be there um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So the Saturday and Sunday of Rhinebeck, but also Friday for like Wool and Folk and India Untangled and stuff. And so if you are going to be there, let me know. We'd love to see you. Uh, but that is kind of our last leg of that trip. And then we'll go back to Oklahoma again. We'll be in Oklahoma for about a week. And then in November, we are going to South America. So we are going to primarily Argentina and Chile. We are going to start in Buenos Aires, spend about a week there. Um, we're going to go to Iguazu, the gorgeous waterfall in between Argentina and Brazil. We are actually, I think, going to spend like one day technically in Brazil because we're going to go to the Brazil side of the waterfall as well. And then from there, we are going to fly south to the southern region of 
South America to the Patagonia region. And we're gonna spend some time both in Argentina and Chile there in the national parks. We're gonna go to the Glacier National Park in Argentina. And we are also gonna go to Torres del Paine National Park in Chile. And then we'll go up to Santiago for just like one day. And then we are going to fly back to Oklahoma City. <laughs> so that will be our, basically our like three weeks in November. After that, we will be back in Oklahoma for about a week. And then in early December, we're going to do a national parks road trip. We're going to go to the national parks in um, Texas and New Mexico. So that'll just be a, a road trip, a domestic trip for us. We're going to drive down to like Big Bend um, and then a couple of the other national parks in the area and take about a week, a week and a half to do that. So that will be really fun as well. And then we're going to be home for the holidays. So we're actually going to be in Oklahoma for about a month at that point from mid December until early to mid January. We're going to just be hanging out with family, um, and are not going to be traveling during that period. Just so we make sure to be with family. We'll also be like, I mean, I guess this doesn't matter that much, but We'll be back um, end of November for Thanksgiving and everything too, so we can be with family for that time too. So that's kind of through the rest of this year. And then in January, we're gonna probably take a short domestic trip um, in the beginning or middle of January. We're still kind of figuring that out. We're not sure exactly where we're gonna go. Maybe Arkansas we talked about, cause that's pretty close to here. Um, we then, oh, Norman. Norman, come here. Norman, come here. You're just fine. Hey, what's up? I promise you're okay. Thank you. That's enough, thank you so much. Um, okay, why don't you step on everything? That's a great idea. Perfect. Okay. Um, then in late January, we are headed to Australia and New Zealand. So that, I know. Okay, there you go. Um, here's Norm. He's gonna just stand here, I guess. I'm in, sit, sit. There you go. Do you want me to move my purse so that you can sit? This is absolute chaos. Come here. Okay, I'll let you sort yourself out. So we're headed to Australia and New Zealand. That's gonna be one of our longer trips because we wanna make sure that we get the most of our time there. So we'll be in Australia for like two to three weeks. We're gonna spend a couple weeks in New Zealand as well. Um, and before that, we're gonna go spend some time in San Francisco visiting some friends as well. Um, so that will be, then we'll leave from San Francisco to Australia just, um, make that flight a little bit shorter. I have a lot of anxiety about flying. Um, I'm not like anxious on the plane too much, but I just, I can't really sleep on planes. Maybe don't jump down into the middle of everything. Um, <laughs> I can't really sleep on planes. And so for these like really long flights, I'm very nervous about how it's gonna go. Like if I'm not gonna be able to sleep on a 16 hour flight. Like that's gonna be brutal. So I'm getting all the tools. I got a new travel pillow and I'm gonna have to make sure that I bring like hand knit socks. I think I just need to make sure I stay warm enough because that's part of my problem on planes I think is I'm too cold. Okay, Norman's leaving. <laughs> so anyway, I'm very nervous about that on that flight but some of the other ones are pretty long too. So Australia and New Zealand, that'll be in like Jan um, mostly February, like late January to late February. And then we'll be back in Oklahoma for a couple weeks. And then the plan, we actually haven't gotten like flights and stuff for this one sorted out, but the plan is to go to... Okay, hi. I probably should have expected this when my battery died. I also have a cuddly norm now, like maybe a calm norm, so... We'll see if that, if that persists. Um, this is so long and this is so chaotic and this is just, wow. But I think I was talking about our final like kind of planned trip. We don't have flights for it yet, but we are planning to go to Spain and Scotland and Ireland. Really, really excited for that one. I think that's gonna be a great 
um, kind of final big international trip for us. We, uh, I have just had Scotland and Ireland on my list for so long. I think especially because of the like sheep and wool and knitting culture there. I can't wait. And I've heard of like lots of folks that have gone there and have had just the best time. So I'm really, really excited for that. Um, and so that is the plan in the like late March, early April time. And then I think we're probably going to do just domestic travel after that. We would love to go like visit some more baseball stadiums. Um, in the U.S. and by that time it'll be baseball season again so that is definitely on our list and then yeah just depending on if we're ready to kind of shut it down and figure out where we go next um, we'll just kind of take it from there so that's just kind of an outline of where we're headed um, let me think about what else I can share I we are not really sure what happens next for us after the travel period is over. We are not really sure if we'll go back to Seattle, um, where we'll go, what our jobs will look like, what our lives will look like. Um, and I am working on being okay with that level of uncertainty. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, we'll just kind of have to wait and see what happens, how we're feeling at the time. Once we start to wrap up, we'll figure out what, what comes next. Um, let's see. Maybe now is a good time for me to just like open up uh, and look through the questions and I can try to answer, um, answer those. So let me pull them up. I just took a screenshot. I think you can go back and look at them, but I'm not really sure how I'm, I'm Instagram is, <laughs> I don't know how to use it properly. Okay. So here are some questions. There are some questions about whether we're going to continue working. I already answered that. We are not going to be working. Top five places you want to visit. This is really hard um, to limit it. I think that Greece and Croatia were both like really high on my list uh, just based on what I've seen and what other people have shared about going there. Greece and Croatia are definitely up there. Also, um, Australia and New Zealand. Maybe I, I don't know if these each count as separate because then I already have four, but Australia and New Zealand was also really high for me and then definitely Scotland and Ireland. So I think those are probably, I know that's kind of six, kind of, I don't know if you count some of them together, but I think those are top, very top of my list. There's some domestic places that I'm really excited for as well, like some of the national parks and um, going to, of course, like going to visit my sister I'm really excited for and spending time in like upstate New York in the fall, I think it's going to be amazing. And like South America. Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm basically, I'm so excited for everywhere we're going, but yeah. So hopefully that's kind of an answer. Um, this is asking where are we going first and why there? We are first going to Romania and we are going there first because our friend is getting married in Romania. So um, that's kind of gonna be the kickoff. Uh, what are some of the must visit places on your list? I kind of went through where all we are going. Um, this question is, do you have definite plans or is it all loose? Work while you travel, plans after travel. So I think I already talked about some of this stuff. We are definitely planners. So we have pretty much things planned out um, for, our first couple trips, we already have like itineraries and everything set. We already have flights, we have accommodations, we have like some tours and stuff booked, that kind of stuff we already have planned out. And then for the later trips, we're hoping to be able to do that as we go. Um, we would love to not be planning trips while we are on trips, just because we wanna be able to be fully in it. And like, that's part of the reason why we're not gonna be working while we travel as well, because we wanna be completely like invested in the travel at that time. But we are gonna have some breaks in between trips and so we'll probably be doing a lot of trip planning during that time and then also we have a longer break around the holidays like at the end of the year. So that will be a really good time for us to get set up for the next like few months of our travel. And then as far as after travel plans, we don't know. We are trying to like leave it up in the air a little bit and we'll just have to see how we feel after the travel period is over. Um, this question is, where do you plan on going, which I already kind of talked about, and will you still be knitting during the travel? The answer is yes, and this is great because I didn't talk about this, and I definitely should have talked about this, my knitting plans during our travel. So, I have to bring knitting 
while we're traveling and I don't want to bring too much but I also don't want to bring not enough so my tentative plan is since each of our trips is going to be like three to four weeks roughly I mean there's some shorter ones and some longer ones my plan is to bring one sweater project for each trip and to basically cast on that project like right before the trip so I want to only bring one sweater project and I want it to be like I want to have excuse me I'm sorry uh ooh, I want to have like the entire sweater to work on during that trip so um for this first trip I'm bringing the Rhinebeck sweater and the boucle I will be working on that I like just started it I'm pretty much probably not going to work on it much before Saturday and so then I'll have the entire sweater to knit on flights and that kind of thing I'm also going to try to bring a sock project for every trip because I want to make sure that I have um just small knitting that I can put like I have a small purse or like a crossbody bag that I can toss a sock project in that I can take with me more places so that it'll just be a little bit more portable and then I may also bring my crochet project just because for flights where I'm nervous about bringing knitting needles onto the plane I think I can bring the crochet project and it won't cause me as much trouble so um, I do think that there's a chance that I buy yarn on some of these trips and so I'm probably gonna also bring in my checked bag my at least like a ne interchangeable needle set so that way if I buy yarn on my travels and I decide that I want to start that project or if I am knitting through things more quickly than I expect I am able to start new projects while we're on the road so that is generally my knitting plan um, I'm hopeful that I'll basically have like a sweater and a sock project that I primarily knit on each trip and that'll be like a really good memento almost for me, like a memory for me um, that I'll have from each trip. So it'll be like this was my Europe sweater and this was my South America sweater and this was my Australia and New Zealand sweater, you know, so I think that will be a kind of cool thing. Um, let's see, what else? domestic or international travel, some of both. Um, am I hoping to keep designing and podcasting? Great question. Podcasting, I touched on a little bit. I would love to record a video each time we're back in Oklahoma. So that will be roughly once a month uh, is the hope. And then I can talk about our trips, but I can also talk about like all the stuff I knit and I can show you the progress I made. And if I bought any yarn on that trip, I can share it then. So that is my hope. Um, as far as designing goes, I am not planning to do any pattern writing or test knitting during the travel period, just because that does require quite a bit of work and attention and time. Um, however, I am likely to work on knitting samples for new designs during this travel period, but I will just be doing the like test knits and stuff and the um, just like the test knits and the pattern writing and the tech editing and all of that I will probably do once the travel period is over. We'll see. I have some like ideas. I always have ideas for summer projects for like tees and stuff, t-shirts and tank tops and stuff. And I would love to get those out like next spring, but we'll have to see what I'm able to do. But at least at the beginning, I'm not going to be doing any, I'm not going to be doing any designing during this period. So that is a little bit of a bummer for sure. Um, so another question that, that's very similar, someone asked if we're backpacking. So no, um, our travel style is, I would say very much like mid-level. We are not going to be staying at like really fancy hotels, but we are also, um, not going to be staying in like hostels and stuff. We're not going to be, um, backpacking. We will have like some luggage and stuff. Um, we're staying in a lot of like Airbnbs and like, you know, kind of less expensive hotels kind of is the vibe. Um, and we are primary, primarily going to be traveling by plane. There are some places where we will be able to just get around with um, public transportation and we'll just be like walking places. Um, and then there are some places that we are going to be renting a car to get around. So it kind of varies from place to place. But uh, yeah, we will not be backpacking. I think I remember someone also asking here about like if we were gonna do like camper van style, that kind of thing. Um, we have done that before actually. We did a camper van when we went to Iceland a couple years ago. Wow, I guess that was like five years ago now. 
um, we did a camper van and we loved that. And so we're absolutely not opposed to doing that. Um, it didn't seem like the best option, I don't think, for any of the places that we are going. So it's not in our plans right now, but that's not to say that like we're not open to it or we wouldn't do it in the future. We totally would. Um, where to first? Romania. Um, yarn storage solutions while traveling. I am storing all my yarn and my hand knits at either my parents' house or Nafis's family's house. Um, we do have a storage unit for a lot of like our furniture and like all the stuff from our kitchen and that kind of stuff. But I did not feel comfortable leaving. It is like, it's a climate controlled storage unit and it would probably be okay for me to leave that stuff there, but I just didn't feel comfortable. So all my yarn and my hand knits and stuff are in our family's homes. Um, I have them in either like airtight plastic bags, like those big Ikea bags, or in plastic bins. Um, and they're just easy to access. So I'll be able to check on them whenever I come back in between trips. And so, yeah, that is where my yarn is. Um, will I do meetups as I travel? Uh, I did not intend to. The big thing about this is, uh, this is something that my husband and I are doing together rather than it being like a me yarn travel type thing. We are doing some like yarn related trips, but, um, primarily this is going to be about like just us traveling and having adventures together and spending time together. So like, I definitely don't want to take too much of our time to do like just for me dedicated things. So my guess would be no, I probably won't be doing meetups. Um, if like I mentioned that I'm going somewhere and you live there or you've been there or you have recommendations for places that we should go, like definitely let me know. I would love that. Um, but I am not intending to do like any kind of planned meetups as well. Also, I'm a little bit like logistic and planned out um, <laughs> given all of this. And so like planning meetups and the logistics behind that and stuff too, um, I will probably pass on. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna be at Rhinebeck, let me know, I'd love to see you. And otherwise, yeah. I don't know if that was a weird answer, but um let's see um a lot of these questions i already answered before where are my husband and i both individually most excited to go this is hard um and every time i ask my husband this he does not give me a straight answer so i don't it's hard for me to say i think i talked about my top places i think greece and croatia are like probably my very top just because i've heard folks that have gone there that have loved it and it's just gorgeous and i I think I, I really can't wait. If I had to guess for my husband, I would probably say Australia and New Zealand for him. I think he's most excited for. My husband was actually born in Australia. I don't know this. I don't think I've told this story before. My husband was actually born there. And so, and he's never been back. His family moved away when he was like very young. I think he was like two years old. Um, so he has never been back since then. So that will be very fun um, to go back to where he was born. Um, someone asked if I was being sponsored to travel. The answer to that is no. Uh, I We are footing the bill ourselves, so um, no sponsor. And I just wanted to talk about that as well. Um, my intent is not to turn like this channel or my Instagram account or anything into like a travel account. Uh, because I know that most of y'all here are here, and I guess I am talking about this extensively now, so maybe I am not doing a good job of that. But I thought, I don't know, I thought folks wanted to know, and if you don't want to listen to this, you can totally just skip it. But um, I, sorry, there's someone outside, and I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm just going to keep going. Um, I'm not planning to turn this into like a travel account. I will primarily be focusing on what I'm making and crafting and knitting. And I know that that's like my audience here and also on Instagram is primarily here for those things. And so I don't want to do like a bait and switch and like turn it into a travel account. Uh, I am going to share some just because I'm a whole person and this is what I will be doing my with my time and it seems like folks are like pretty interested in the travel as well and like have questions about it and want to see pictures and like where we're going to go so i will be sharing some however my husband had the idea to do an email newsletter 
where we are going to share like photos and stories from our adventures periodically and uh if you're interested in knowing more about our travel and how it's going you're welcome to sign up for that so i'm going to try to put a link in the description box and i'll also have it like on my instagram you can find it um and i think it'll be it'll exist on my website so you can go to my website and you can find the information there to sign up for it but we'll just i mean it's not going to be like tons of emails maybe like once a week we'll just include some pictures and some stories about where we were and what we loved and everything so um but to that end we probably won't be sharing as much on like our personal accounts or like on you know emily kurt and gently caught chaotic knits and stuff um i talked about my knitting that i'm planning during my traveling um someone asked do you bring cooking supplies when you travel uh no we will not bring anything with us i don't think um a lot of what we love about travel is when we go places we get to experience the food and the culture there so we're really excited to you know eat lots of great food from the places that we're going we're doing some food tours in different places and uh so i think we'll be doing a lot of eating out just because that's the nature of it but i do think we'll try to do some cooking but that'll be stuff that we'll like try to pick up when we're there we are staying a lot in airbnbs that have like kitchens and stuff so we should have access to cooking supplies and stuff there and then like just run to the grocery and get whatever we need so hopefully it won't be a big deal to do a little bit of cooking although if i'm being honest we probably won't be doing a ton of it so um there's that let's see what else what destination are you most excited about i talked about where are you off to first i talked about um someone asked if i plan on participating in vlogmas the answer for that is probably no um vlogmas is like a big logistical thing like it takes a lot of work and effort um and in the effort of like being really present during our travel period i do not want to take time away like filming and editing videos and stuff and and have that take away from our traveler however for about half of december i will just be back in oklahoma so like there's a chance maybe i'll do like a vlogmas video or something like a just one weekly vlog or something one or two i don't know um but i'm not gonna make any promises i have no idea if i'll do that or not my guess would be not but maybe um but probably not when we're traveling and this person asked what are you guys traveling in and the answer is mostly planes <laughs> we are flying places and then we are going to be driving some places but and if we if we are driving places like if we're doing domestic travel sorry norman's trying to get down if we're doing domestic travel it will be in my car which is just like a little hatchback um so we'll just be in that and Otherwise, we'll just be flying places. We'll be doing trains and, I don't know, a variety of modes of transportation. Trains and rental cars and all kinds of stuff. So, but mostly planes. We're mostly flying places. Um, so I'm going to get really comfortable flying. I better learn how to sleep on planes. And that is it. If I missed your question, it's probably because I took the screenshots of the questions before you asked it. And for that, I'm sorry. Um... And I'm trying to think about if there's anything else that might come up or that I can think of that I would want to share. I can't really think of anything. So yeah, thank you so much for listening. And I'm really sorry for how crazy this was, how chaotic it was. This was a lot. Um, yeah, but I really wanted to make sure to record and get something in before before I leave because I won't have another opportunity for another like month so thank you for tuning in if you made it all the way here <laughs> wow that's dedication and I'm impressed and I'm just really appreciative of y'all so thanks for hanging in there with me I know it's been a little more inconsistent and I know that I'm basically just telling you now that it's going to be more inconsistent but I still do get a lot of enjoyment just sitting down and chatting with y'all about what I've been working on and just the community aspect here has been really astounding to me and I just love it so much. So thanks for hanging in and next time I see you, I will have been across the world and back. So 
I can't wait. Let's, let's hope I've got some projects finished by then. I'm really hoping and maybe some beautiful yarn to show you as well. So if any of you know of like yarn stores and any of the places I'm going, please tell me. Drop a comment. Would love to know. First things first, Romania, Greece, and Croatia. Yarn stores, any of those places, let me know. Would love to know. Would love to check out some yarn stores. So yeah, I hope you do lots of knitting, watch lots of baseball, do lots of traveling, pet all your dogs, <laughs> and I hope you have a great month, and I'll see you in about a month. Bye.